Hey everyone, it's Mr. N again, and uh, we are going to do this review for the Chapter 5, our second test. This is our online review. You received this worksheet in class. And let's go ahead and start with a couple things on here that I just want you to be aware of and remind yourself of. The first one is the definition of continuity. So make sure you review that. Remember, there's three parts to it. The first part of this definition is that if you are approaching x at a value a, f of a must exist. Second part is the limit as x approaches a exists. So make sure you test it from the left side and the right side so that the limit does exist. And then the third part together, this limit as it approaches a must equal this f of a value. So that's the definition of continuity. Again, I also want you to review the trapezoid rule. Remember a trapezoid rule? If you're given a table of values, go ahead and break it up. Just kind of sketch a quick graph of it. Um, also, you could know the formula. Don't forget, though, it's one half times the bases. And in our trapezoid rule, the bases will, are going to be this way. And this is going to be our height. This will be base one, base two. And so we end up, when we're writing this as a function, remember, you'll have f of 1 and then plus 2, f of 2, plus 2, etc. And then on the last one, you'll just have your last f of a value right there, or f of b, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so just make sure you review those. Okay, now moving on to what we have covered in Chapter 5. This first problem, if the integral from 0 to a of sine of x sine of 3x dx equals c, then the integral from negative a to a of sine of 3x dx equals what? Well, what this is asking is that you understand that if I have a sine graph, it's symmetric. And in this case, it's just going to be compressed horizontally because of that 3. In other words, I'm changing the period. So if I'm looking at this part, notice the area up here negates the area down here. So if I'm going from 0 to a as opposed from negative a to a, the area will cancel itself out. So instead of having to integrate and solve this, you can just take a look at this and realize that this is an odd function. And you can test it out. Odd function, remember, of f of x equals f of negative x, right? And since it's an odd function, we can say that the integral from 0 to a if this equals c, that means the integral from negative a, because it's symmetric about this, will end up being 0. All right, taking a look at the next problem. Over here, it's the same type of situation. I have 2x cubed. If I quickly sketch what we are dealing with when I say 2x cubed, I will have this function right here, and it's a cubic function. Again, it's there. there is symmetry to it. And the 2x cubed, the 2 is just stretched vertically. So what ends up happening is we have the same situation as before. The integral from 0 to a, if this equals c, then the integral from negative a to a, this is an odd function again, will be 0. If it's an even function, then we just double it. What would an even function be? Well, if you had something parabolic like this, Notice how if you are going from 0 to a, there's an area right there, and then negative 8a, you're just going to double that. It's going to be twice that area. So just make sure you review odd and even functions and being able to take a problem like this and determine if it's odd or even and quickly find the integral. Okay, so now we're moving on to number 2, and on this one, we're just going to go ahead and integrate. So this is going to be x to the fifth. So I need this 3. So this will be 3 fifths minus this will be x cubed. So then I need to put a, the 2 here and a 2 thirds. This will be 1 half x squared plus my 5x plus c. That's this first problem fully integrated. OK, next one. What we want to do with this one is we want to change this integral a little bit. Let me go ahead and move this up so we can work with this a little bit better. And I want to change this to be x to the 1 half, and then I'm going to change this one to be x to the negative 3. And we have our dx, so now we want to integrate from this point. So this is going to become x to the 3 halves. We're going to raise it up a power, so this will be 2 thirds that I'll need to put out in front. And then we do the same thing here. This will be x to the negative 2 when we raise it up 1 power. So then I'll need a negative 1 half out in front there 
I can, again, what am I doing? I'm taking a look at this and taking the derivative here and making sure it matches that. Take the derivative here, make sure it matches that because there they are inverse operations between the derivative and the integral. So now let's clean this up a little bit. We'll write this as two thirds x to the three halves plus, actually this would just be minus. So let's put a minus there. And we're going to say minus, this will be 1 over 2x squared plus c. So that is this integrated. Okay, let's move on to the next one. And then on this one, we have the integral of 1 minus 1 over the cube root of x to the fourth. So again, I just want to rewrite this to be 1 minus x to this. This is going to be negative 4 thirds this time dx. Alright, so integrating this, I'll get x. On this side, I'll have negative, so minus, and this will be negative 3, x to the negative 1 third. Again, I raised it up one power, I added a power, so this will be plus the c, don't forget plus c. So over here, we're going to write x plus, and I'm just cleaning this up a little bit, this will be 3 over the cube root of x plus c. Okay. Moving on to number 5. So for number 5, um, I've got x cubed minus 2 cosine x. So let's go ahead and um, start this integration process. This one's a little easier. I could just say 1 fourth x to the fourth. And over here, the derivative of sine is cosine. So if I use negative sine, that would be negative cosine, which is what I want. So in other words, I'm saying minus negative 2 sine x. So this is minus negative 2 sine x. So this will be plus 2 sine x plus c. All right. So moving on to number 6. On number 6, what I want to do is I want to change this. And I want to, these are definite integrals now, so I won't have a plus c. I'll get an actual answer. So for this first one, I'm going to rewrite this to be the integral from 1 to 2 of, let's go ahead and say x squared over root x minus 4 over root x. So I just broke it apart. That's all I'm doing. Now remember, x squared over root x is just going to be right here, this part x squared over root x is just going to be x times x to the one-half, right? Negative one-half. So in this case, I'll get x to the three-halves. So it'll be one-and-a-half, which is three-halves. So that's what I'm going to rewrite this to be. So this ends up being the integral from one to two of x to the three-halves minus four. This will be x to the negative one-half. And then we have our, oops, we have our dx here. Okay, let's move this up again. Now, working with this, this is the tricky part. Right here, we're going to add 2 over 2 because we're raising it up to a power. So this will be x to the 5 halves, so that means I'll need a 2 fifths out in front when I end it after the integral. Over here, minus 4, and this ends up being 2, so times 2, x to the 1 half. And these are on the bounds from 1 to 2. So cleaning this up again a little bit. And you could clean it up at this point and write this as 2 fifths x to the 5 halves minus 8x to the 1 half. Okay, so these are on the bounds from 1 to 2. And let's go ahead and plug these in and see where we end up. All right, so when I plug the 2 in, I'm going to end up with 2 fifths. This will be 2 to the 5 halves minus, this will be 8 times 2 to the 1 half. So we're just going to write it as 8 times root 2. That's the first part. Minus. Now we're going to plug in the 1. So when I plug in 1, I'm just going to get 2 fifths minus. So I'm plugging again. I first plugged in the 2 into the x and now subtracting it 1 into those x's. So I plugged in the 1, I got 2 fifths. Plug in the 1 on the other side, you're going to get minus 8. 
all of this comes out to be now this is just a bunch of algebra and cleaning this up so this is going to be two-fifths times four root two again how do I get four root two out of that take a look here take a look I had two to the fifth power and then taking that square root so I broke that down or you could say the square root of two to the fifth power either way I broke it down and that's where I ended up at four root two and then this is going to be minus eight root two plus thirty eight fifths when I clean all that up. So this becomes 8 fifths root 2 minus 8 root 2 plus 38 fifths and all this comes out to be equal to negative 32 over 5 root 2 plus my 38 fifths and as a decimal if you wanted to check this with your calculator this comes out to be negative 1.451. Okay, moving on to number seven. On number seven, we're gonna go ahead and just straight up integrate this and it's pretty easy. So this will be x to the fourth plus one half x squared minus x on the bounds from negative one to two. So I'm gonna plug those bounds in. I get 16 plus two minus two minus one plus one half plus one. So this ends up being 16 minus 2.5, which yields 13.5. Okay, finally moving on to this last one here. And for this one, I have the integral from negative pi to pi of cosine dx. Well, this is, again, another one of those that's an odd function. If you don't realize this or cannot see this, well, go ahead and work it out. It's fine. So let's go ahead and work this out. So if I have the integral of this, so if I have sine x, the derivative is cosine x, so this ends up being sine x from negative pi to pi. So we just plug this directly in. I get sine pi minus sine negative pi. Sine of pi ends up being zero. So again, here's our unit circle. This is pi, the sine is zero. Well, negative pi is gonna be zero as well. So I end up with zero as this answer. Again, you can realize that this is symmetric and it's gonna cancel itself out. All right, let's move on to number nine. On number nine, we are gonna use u substitution. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to let u equal some value. And in this case, let's go ahead and let u equal this x plus four value. So that means du equals dx, and I'm gonna start making my substitution here. So I start to the subs with the substitution, I'll get x times u to the 11th du. So again, what did I do? I substituted this x plus four to be the u right there and then I substituted this dx to be this du. But I was still left with this x. Here's the tricky part. How do I get rid of that x? Well, you can't integrate at this point having these two variables because we don't know how to do that yet. And let's take a look. Well, what if I take this and I solve for the x? u minus 4 equals that x. That's just a little trick we're going to do. So this ends up being u minus 4 times u to the 11th du. So all I did was solve this for the u, for the x, and then substituted it in. Now I can distribute this. This becomes the integral of u to the 12th minus 4u to the 11th du. And we can go ahead and integrate at this point. And when we integrate, we will end up with 1 13th u to the 13th, u to the 13th, minus 4 12th, that's a 13 there, 4 12th u to the 12th plus our c. And let's go ahead and resubstitute. So we will get 1 13th x plus 4 to the 13th minus 1 third times x plus 4 to the 12th plus our c. And that is the answer to this. Okay, moving on to number 10. For number 10, we are given the integral 
of x times the square root of x plus 3 dx. So again, we're going to let u equal this part right here, the x plus 3. So du equals dx. And we will make our substitutions right now. So we'll end up with x times the square root of u. And then du is just simply dx. So dx ends up being our du. Again, we're stuck with this x term in here. But we could use the trick we did earlier and we'll say u minus 3 is what our x is. So this becomes the integral of u minus 3. And I'm going to rewrite this as u to the 1 half du. So now let's go ahead and distribute this. And we're going to end up with the integral of u to the 3 halves minus 3u to the 1 half. And that's our du there. And then we we'll go ahead and integrate this, and we'll end up with 2 fifths, 2 fifths u to the 5 halves minus 2u to the 3 halves plus c. So making our substitution, our final answer for this will be 2 fifths, let's rewrite that, 2 fifths u to, oh, again, <laughs> two-fifths x plus three to the five-halves minus two times x plus three to the three-halves plus c. Okay, on number 11, for number 11, we will go ahead and use our u substitution, and we are going to let u equal the x minus 5, so we end up with du being dx again. So we have the integral of u to the 2 fifths du. This one is uh, much simpler than the other one because I don't have that floating x. So now we take the integral of this and we end up with 5 sevenths u to the 7 fifths plus c. Make our substitution. So 5 sevenths times x minus 5 to the 7 fifths plus c. Okay, for number 12, on number 12, you really don't have to do a u substitution method, but we're going to go ahead and still do it anyway. Um, in this, you could see that the integral of this, well, if I take cosine, the derivative would would be what I'm looking for. So here we would have just negative cosine 3x, and then we have times 3 because we're applying the chain rule, so it would be 1 third. So you could do this quickly in your head if you wanted to using guess and check method, but we're, we'll go ahead and do u substitution. So we're going to let u this time equal just that 3x. So the du will be 3dx, and we'll make our substitution here. We'll end up with sine of u, and then this will be du over 3, so we'll put the 1 third out in front, integral sine of u du. And this becomes 1 third times negative cosine u, right, because, plus our c, because negative cosine, the derivative of that will give me the positive sign. So this ends up being negative 1 third cosine of 3x plus c. All right, in this next problem for number 13, well, let's go ahead and integrate it. What we're, it's, we're asked to find this integral, and we're told that it equals 15. So let's go ahead and find that integral. So what we can do is we're going to take this, and this will end up being 3 halves x squared plus x on the bounds from negative 1 to k, and this has to equal 15. So let's plug our numbers in. So 3 halves, I end up with k squared plus k minus, now we're going to have 3 halves times negative 1 squared would just be 1, plus our negative 1. And this has to equal 15. So we end up with 3 halves k squared plus k minus 1 half equals 15. So this ends up being 3 halves k squared plus k. I'm just going to clean it up here. Minus 15 and a half, when I bring it over, equals 0. And here we're going to need to use 
quadratic formula because it won't factor. So let's go ahead and use the quadratic formula. And then we end up with k equaling 2.8985. And uh, we also can end up with negative 3.5651. We end up with two answers from the quadratic formula for k. Okay, let's move on to problem number 14. And in problem number 14, this is just straight up FTC. So we'll find dy dx on this one. And then we end up with this being 1 over the 5x to the 7th power. And then we have to take the derivative of that, which would be 5. So 1 over 5x to the 7th times, or we can just say like this, times this 5. So we could put that up there. All right, for number 15, let's go ahead and change this. And this will be from negative 1 to x squared first. And this becomes cosine t dt. So we're taking the derivative. We end up with cosine x squared with that negative out there. And then we have to take the derivative of this x squared right here. So that ends up being 2x. So we can rewrite this as being negative 2x cosine x squared. And finally, for our last problem here, let's go ahead. Again, this is the dummy variable, so we just ignore that. So we're going to find our dy dx as being the square root of x cubed cubed. So I'm taking this, putting it in there, plus 5 times. Now I need to take the derivative of that because I'm applying the chain rule, 3x squared. And we can just write this as 3x squared times the square root of x to the ninth plus 5. Okay, moving on to number 17. In number 17, we are asked to find the area under these two curves. Now, the, there are two curves here. Here is the first curve, and then there's the second one. So we have a border right here. So we're going to call this area 1, and we'll call that area 2. So area 1 is going to be the integral from 0 to 2 of 2x cubed dx. That's the equation that I'm given right there. We're going to go ahead and integrate this, and we'll get 1 half x to the fourth on the bounds from 0 to 2. Plug in 2, you get 16, divided by 2 is 8, minus 0, so this equals 8 units. All right, so area 2. This is going to be the integral from 2 to 10 now, so from this point to there, from 2 to 10. And we we're given the equation again. This is negative... 2x plus 20 dx. This comes out to be, after we integrate, negative x squared plus 20x on the bounds from 2 to 10. So let's go ahead and plug the, the in. We end up with negative 100 plus 200 minus, this is going to be negative 4 plus 240. And cleaning all this up, we end up with a value of 64 units. These should be square units, so square units. And now we're going to add area 1 plus area 2 up. So that's going to be the 8 plus the 64, which gives us a total area of 72 square units. So that is the area right here under this whole curve. Okay, let's move on. For number 18, we need to find dy dx. So this becomes, I'm going to go ahead and write it as y prime. Remember, y prime is equivalent to saying dy dx. So I'll just go ahead and do that method. So y prime, I took the derivative here. Now the derivative of this one is just going to be 3. I don't write x prime because that would be x, uh, dx over dx, which is just 1, minus, all right, we're going to need the product rule right there, so it's the first times the derivative of the second, which is 1, y prime, plus the second, y, times the derivative of the first, which is 1. So that's what we end up with. So we end up with y prime equaling 3 minus xy prime minus y. Now, bring the y primes on the same side. So this will be plus xy prime equals 3 minus y. I'll end up with 
y prime, I'm going to factor out the y prime, and I'll end up with 1 plus x, when I factor out that y prime, equals 3 minus y over 1 plus the x. So that's what my dy dx is. Okay, moving this now to the next step, finding the second derivative. So we need to find, basically, the derivative of this guy right here. So we need the quotient rule, the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom squared. So let's go ahead and do that, and we're going to end up with d squared y equaling, this is going to be 1 plus x times my negative y prime, that's <coughs> the derivative of the top. I get negative 1 y prime. So the derivative of this guy right here is negative 1 times y prime, because that's 0, because it's a constant. So, this will be minus 3 minus y times 1. So we took the derivative of that bottom. Now, this will be over the bottom squared. So now what's left for me to do is to substitute this y prime into there and clean this whole thing up. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to get 1 plus x times this will be negative, and then this will be, I'm going to write it as negative 1, and I'll write this as 3 minus y over 1 plus x. The reason why I'm doing that is to prevent that floating negative error, because if you distribute it right now, sometimes we make that mistake with keeping that floating negative over here. So this will remind me that I need to distribute that negative. So here I'll end up with, let's move this up a little bit. I will end up with 1 plus x times negative, well, let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and backtrack a little bit. Let me, um, let me backtrack a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and distribute it right now and clean it up. So I'll end up with negative 3 plus y, or else I would end up writing the same step again, minus 3 plus y all over 1 plus x squared. So what I did here is this goes away with that guy right there, and then I could distribute that. Okay, so this ends up being uh, negative 3, negative 3, so I'll get negative 6 plus 2y over 1 plus x squared. This is my d squared y dx squared, my second derivative. Okay, let's take a look at what we have with our next problem. In our next problem, we are given the velocity uh, graph of a particle. So this is our v, of, this is our v right here, and this is our time. And we are first asked to find the maximum speed. Now I'm being asked about speed here. Remember, speed is the absolute value of the velocity. So I need to know where this velocity is the greatest. Right here is four. Right here is negative six. This happens at t equals 3, so this happens at t equals 3, which gives me v of 3 being negative 6, but I want the absolute value of that, so that gives me positive 6, and that's our maximum. So our maximum occurs at t equals 3, and here's the justification, just by reading it off the graph. Okay, when is the acceleration positive? The acceleration is positive means I'm looking at the, I'm looking at a V at T graph, so I want the slopes of V of T to be positive numbers, okay? I need them to be positive. So where are the slopes positive? Right here on this interval. From 3 to 8, those are my positive slopes. So this is the interval in which the acceleration is positive. We're going to assume it stops at zero. It didn't indicate it in the problem, but we're going to say this whole thing goes from the interval, the closed interval, zero to zero. Okay, what is the total distance traveled? Well, for the distance, I need the area under the curve. Since this is a V of T curve, I need the area under it. So in other words, I'm integrating it, getting that area underneath the curve. That gives me my total distance traveled. So... Let's take a look. Over here, let's break this up into parts. I have this part, and then I've got this triangle, and then I can just go ahead and use this whole triangle right here. 
So basically, and since I'm looking at the total distance traveled, I need an absolute value here. I need all these to be absolutes. So I need the absolute value of this rectangle, 4 by 1, plus the absolute value of this rectangle right here. This is a height of 4 and a base of 1, or that triangle, I should say, plus right here, this one, where this has a base of 6 and a height of negative 6. 6 and my height is negative 6. This is the only one in question where I'm going to be changing the value. Over here I end up with 4 plus 2 plus the absolute value of negative 18. Remember that? Because this is the only one in question. Distance is going to be, again, think of it as I move forward, I move backwards. How far did I travel? Well, what I moved forward plus what I moved backwards. That's my distance. So this ends up being at 24 units total is how far I've traveled. Now, this is different from this question where I'm asking where is the particle? This is our displacement. So this one we need displacement. So it's the same as the above question, but this time I don't take the absolutes. I have 4 plus the 2 plus the negative 18 because this tells me I went 4 forwards and then 2 forward and then backwards 18. So that's my negative area and that's where I'm going to end up being. So in this case, I will end up being at negative 12 units. That's where I am. This is how far I've gone. So that's the difference between the two. All right, hopefully this review has helped you. Um, good luck on studying for your test and uh, let me know if you have any questions.